These are easier. I think this day is easier, in my opinion, because the verifying ones are easier. So there's product to sum, which is our first section. We have a sine times a sine, a cosine times a cosine, a sine times a cosine, or a cosine times a sine. So those are all products. And then they can be rewritten as sums. And then we have sum to products, which sine plus sine, sine minus sine, cosine plus cosine, cosine minus cosine, and they can be written as products. So we are just going to really use the whole maze and puzzle of these formulas to take a product, like in part A, and write it as a sum or a difference. So, one second, Liam. So this one is sine times sine. So it's currently a product. So we're going to use our product to sum, and we're going to look for the one that's sine times sine, which is the first one. Do you agree? Okay. What is our alpha? What is our beta? Okay, so now we're just going to use this formula. So it's one half bracket cosine of what is alpha minus beta? 5x minus the cosine was alpha plus beta 11x. And you can distribute your one half. So one half cosine of five x minus one half cosine of eleven x. So there is our original product expressed as a sum or difference in this case. Is that Liam? Yep. Yep. So the second one, sine times cosine. So if I look at my product, sine times cosine is the third one down. What's my alpha? What's my beta? X. So my equation is going to be one half brackets sine of, what's my alpha plus beta in this case? 5x plus my sine of what's alpha minus beta? 3x. Distribute your one half. Let me finish this. If you did what? Yeah. So he's saying if I if I rewrote this as cosine x first times the sine of four x. I would be using this formula technically, but my alpha would now be x, and my beta would now be 4x, and I'd be using this. It, would, it should turn out to be the same thing. Let's do it. So for this one, alpha is x, beta is 4x, and we're using equation 4 here. So 1 half, the sine of the sum of them is still 5x minus the sine of the difference, alpha minus beta would be negative 3x. Oh good, I'm glad you brought this up. Because if I distribute 1 half sine of 5x minus 1 half sine of negative 3x, they don't exactly look the same, do they? Who can explain to me though why they are the same. Yeah, he's on the right track. What is it, Jalen? Not yet. But why is why is it technically minus a negative? 
because of what Josh said. Sine is what type of function? Ah, uh, so the sine of negative 3x is the same as the negative sine, so that brings the negative out in front of 3x, and then it turns to plus. So we just sort of proven that they are the same. Obviously, we should, we should know that they are anyway because the commutative property of multiplication. And then when we use the two separate formulas, you get one-half sine of 5x plus one-half sine of 3x. Either way you do it. Okay? All right, then these down here that start as a sum. So we have a sine plus a sine. So we're going over here, sine plus a sine is our sum to product equation number one. What's our alpha? What's our beta? Okay, so our formula says two times the sine. What's alpha plus beta divided by two? Seven x. Cosine alpha minus beta divided by two. That's 4x divided by 2, which is 2x. You decide what works for you, how much of that to do at once. If you want to just, if you literally want to plug it in, term for term, and then simplify, good. If you want to do your subtraction and addition and keep it over 2 at first, good. If you want to do it all at once, so be it. But that's your answer. Sum to product. And then on B, cosine minus cosine negative 2 sine our alpha was 4x our beta is 3x are we good with that <coughs> so it's the sine of alpha plus alpha alpha plus beta rather over 2 that's going to be 7x over 2 so just keep that 7x over 2 stay away from the decimal times your sine of alpha minus beta over 2 which will just be x over 2. Well, the power of 1, they do. They're just sine to the first power. If they... S well, you can't multiply sine of this times sine of that and make it sine squared because you're not taking the sine of the same thing. Like sine of b times sine of b is sine squared b. That's okay. But sine of a times sine of b, you cannot make that a sine squared because they're different. Are you with me? So Difference to product. Good? All right, flip to the back. So a verification, take a look at this and take a look at your formulas and search for what structure that is because I think we're probably going to use one of these. Backwards? Or maybe not. This is just the difference, so maybe we'll just use sum to product. So, do you see a cosine minus cosine on your paper anywhere? Yes, right here at the bottom, cosine minus cosine. So, we're going to turn the numerator into this. Negative 2 sine of alpha plus beta is 8x divided by 2 is 4x. And then sine alpha minus beta 3x minus 5x is negative 2x divided by 2 is negative x. So there's my numerator. Denominator is sine plus sine, so that's equation number 1 under the sum to product. So that's 2 sine Alpha plus beta on the bottom again is 8x. Over 2 is 4x again. Cosine 
alpha minus beta, 3x minus 5x is negative 2x, divided by 2 is negative x again. So, what are our thoughts here? There's a couple different directions we can go from here. We'll all end up at the same place, obviously, but what do we want to address first? So he's concerned with the even odd piece right here. So the sine of negative x is the same as negative sine of x. So I'm going to, because it's odd. So I'm going to bring a negative out in front. And so to document this appropriately for a proof, there's the original negative, and here's the negative I'm bringing out in front. That's going to change that to sine of x. Yes, I will just make it a positive, but for the reader, it's difficult to see that if you're not documenting that change. Sure. And then on our denominator, and again, sometimes I like to circle what I'm changing so that you can see it. Since cosine is even, the cosine of negative x is the same as cosine, just plain old cosine of x. Okay, so now... Josh decided for you all that we were dealing with the even odd piece first and getting that negative out of there. So now what? Cancel the what? The twos, gone. The double negative is a positive, so that's pretty irrelevant. Sine of 4x over sine of 4x is gone. Sine over cosine is tan x. <clears throat> Your homework at the bottom is 1s, 5s, and 9s. Now, we're not done. You have a lot of space there at the bottom, yes? We're done with this new stuff, but since last night's homework was so difficult... I think we should practice more. So, what I'm going to ask you to do is play around with this for a couple minutes. Prove. Do you have your formula sheets out? Good. I'm just going to pick an even. 2 tan of alpha over 2 equals sine squared alpha plus 1 minus cosine squared alpha over sine alpha 1 plus cosine alpha. That's just a random even one. <coughs> that I want you to play around with. Me included.
Josh, you're done? Yeah. All right, let me take a peek. Raise your hand when you're done, and I'll look at yours.
change it to a sine squared theta alpha. Combine it with sine squared alpha. And when you combine it to two sine squared alpha over the, what the denominator was, the sine in the denominator cancels with one of the signs in the numerator. Again, we're whittling it down. So now we have two sine theta over one plus cosine theta. I keep saying theta, it's alpha, but we get it. Who cares, right? And that's my right-hand side, which is pretty much now, because I see what happened to my right-hand side, now if I'm looking at my two tan options, it's pretty obvious which one I should take. The second one, not the first one. And so I take the second one, 2, and I replace it, and then 2 sine alpha over 1 plus cosine alpha equals 2 sine alpha over 1 plus cosine alpha. Okay? Now the couple comments I wanted to say for, um, this was Steven. Okay, presentation is important, like I said. That's the second part of it. Number one, do you get it? And I can usually tell conceptually whether or not you get it. Number two, how are you presenting it? So he replaced his 1 minus cosine squared with a sine squared. And then he scribbled it out and did the two. So, two, so essentially, for all intents and purposes, this is all I see. He did two steps in one. For a reader, and just like in geometry, you don't do two steps in one. Everything has a statement and a reason, a statement and a reason. So everything has to go step by step. So he needs to change this like I did to sine squared plus sine squared. And I know it's more writing, but it has to be presented that way. And then make your sine squared plus sine squared two sine squared and then go about canceling. He also got, got down here. And then I said, well, then what, what the heck is this? He goes, oh, that was just me experimenting with the left-hand side at first. Well, if you didn't end up using it, then erase it. Because that does not equal that. It needs to be verbatim. So he essentially, he's not touching the left-hand side. And he needs to bring this down and say 2 tan of alpha over 2 and show. I've not touched this. I moved this one and it morphed into that. And they're equal. And Josh, I had a similar complaint on just his presentation. He does everything great on the right-hand side, but he needs the equals, first of all, the whole way down, and he needs to bring this down to show me I did not touch that side. Okay? Whereas on mine, I did touch that side initially, and then I didn't touch it ever again. So our final... Checkmark statements are the same, or are different, but they're both legit proofs. Do we follow? Jalen. So let's Get started on that review sheet, by the way, online. Big pizza that over the weekend.